morning, good morning. <clears throat> good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. <clears throat> good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you. Invite your friends. Amen. Invite your friends this uh, mm -hmm. Wednesday morning. I got a word for for you from the Lord. I'm going to encourage you in the Lord. Amen. I go. I know some of you know already. The whole household been sick. God bless you. Good morning, Dreamer. <clears throat> the whole household been sick. Emily started with Emily, and then uh, me and Mama. So all of us been kind of under the weather, uh, and now that Emily's doing better, Mama still look bad and. You know, I'm fighting through it myself. Matter of fact, last night, I coughed. I think I coughed all night. I think I coughed all night. I think the air, when I was laying down, it kind of got me, and I was kept on coughing, but I made it through it. But I was excited. I was excited because when I went to sleep, I was thinking about what God had put in my heart to speak to you. And I want to deliver this message this morning. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Please invite your friends, invite your invite your friends, and even invite your enemies. If you got enemies, invite them too. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Jolene. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God is so good, and I miss you. Hadn't seen you in a while, and I, I know you you, uh, you got things you got to do and whatnot, and uh, it's good to hear from you. But I do have a word from the Lord. Give me about 15 more seconds, and we're going to get started. I ain't going to worry your patience. I ain't going to worry your time. Good morning, Yasmin. Uh, good morning, Marcela. The name, language of love. A uh, couple announcements. Uh, also, as well, you know, I'm an author. And if you still want to get a copy of this particular book, you can go to my website, and that's Ernest, uh, www.ernestwest.org, and purchase your copy, and you will get a signed autographed copy of my book. It's called Secrets. It's called Secrets. And what is a secret? A secret is when uh, someone is... Uh, lying with their mouth but they're withholding the truth with their heart they're holding something that you can't see that you don't know to use it against you that's a secret Manip manipulation people who are deceptive that's the adversary uh, charming at times people that use words as seed uh, to to get you to open your spirit up to open your heart up and then once your spirit and heart is open up then then they will plant a uh, deception in you then they will plant hate in you. They will plant hurt in you. They will cause you to become bitter. And so that's a secret. That's a secret. That's a secret. So this is my book here. This is my book. This is my book. You can go to my website www.earnestwest.org and get your copy today. Amen. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start it. Let's go ahead and get started. Now uh, one of the things that I've been noticing, one of the things that I've been aware of is that the people of God are still under attack and it's not a bad thing if you really know the plan. Because the Bible says that faith is the substance. It's substance of things hoped for, and hope is expected. In other words, there's an ending. Uh, there's a desired, there's a desired target uh, in in your hope, in your hope. Because hope is expectation when you believe it. And so, what does faith does? Faith carries you to hope. And so, but there are many people that are, are people of God that are under attack. Now, if I would give you a message today, one of the things that I would talk about is weariness, being weary. Being weary, being troubled, going through changes, being discouraged. I want to talk about weariness, but also inside of that word weariness, I want a subtopic or a sub have a sub thought, and that thought is delayed, but not denied. You have been delayed, but not denied. Now, if I can use, if I can use as an example, because uh, for the airport with planes coming in. Now, I used to work for the airport. I work for Delta. And the thing about it, when planes are coming in, oftentimes there's a plane that come in. And when that plane is supposed to arrive at a certain time, but the, 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 the controller will let them know to keep circling. Keep circling. There's a delay. There's a delay on their approach in. And so what they will do, they will circle around and circle around and circle around until they get those flashlights of clearance. And once they get those get that clearance, then that plane will come in. And see, this this are many of you. You in a place where you're in a holding pattern. 
You in a delay. You in a delay. And what God has said for you and what you believe in God for, what you're hoping for, you in a delay. It seems like and it appears like you're circling. You're circling. You're waiting. You're waiting. You're waiting. And see, the thing about it with the delay, that don't mean it's not going to happen. It just means it's, it's, it's delayed until things clear up. And see, many of you, the reason why there's a delay in your life is because God is holding back till things clear up. There are certain things that God wants to uh, 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 get right first. Or the main thing, God wants to get right in you. And then once you get right, and once your mind get right, once your spirit get right, once you become developed, once you become prepared and uh, at a place of appreciating what God has for you, then God will bring clearance. And see, that's where many of you are at. You're at that place where you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. And see, the thing about it, check this out. Galatians 6 and 9. The Bible says, the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing, but in due season, if we faint not, we shall reap the harvest. In other words, the Bible tells us, let us not be weary. That word weary is trouble, also is toiling, also is labor. And see the thing about it, when a mother, uh, when a mother is in that third trimester, when, when she's she got labor pains, she's toiling, she's going through all kinds of pains. And see, many of you, you're toiling. You're going through all kinds of pains. And it's hurt and it's severe. Many of you, what you're going through is severe. The pain that you're going through is severe. And the thing about it, there are many things that are in your spirit that's coming up at the same time. And the reason why these things in your spirit that are coming up at the same time, and see, it's not the devil, but it's God. And see, when God is close to you, what God will do, God will store up things. God will cause things to come to the surface that you can see them and that you will know how to deal with them. Because if you didn't know how to deal with them, then how will you see them? Then how would you know how to deal with them? And so that's why God is bringing things up in your life. Relationships up in your life. Uh, emotions up in your life. Feelings up in your life. God is bringing these things up in your life that they might be dealt with. And see, we are in, you are in the hour and you're in the place where God will and going to deliver you. That's why things are trouble. That's why things are your toilet. It seems like you're laboring. It seems like trouble is all around. See, but the thing about it is you need to understand about trouble. The Bible said God said he's the very present help in your time of trouble. And in that place where you're under trouble, all God wants you to do is to call on his name. Because the Bible says he's a very present help. But he said that whosoever shall call on his name, they shall be delivered. In other words, in your situation, if you call on his name and you call him and ask for help, he's going to come where you are and he's going to deliver you. And so the thing about it, you need to understand about also about this word weariness. Also, this weariness means the labor. To labor when that mother is in that in pain and the baby is trying to come out and the, and the mother is going and toiling and moaning and groaning. Many of you you're moaning and groaning and you're going through all kind of changes and you think it's something bad. See, but there's something good that's coming out of your spirit. There's something good that's coming out of your relationship. There's something good that's coming out of your life. For the Bible says the Bible says uh, that the counted all joy and the sufferings of this life is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. In other words, there's a glory in you. And that glory has to be activated. That glory has to be poured upon. And see what God is doing because you're under pressure. And see, there's an old saying that says there's pressure that busts pipes but they also make diamonds. And see, in the painful, in the travailing place that you're going through, God is developing you. And God is maturing you. God is preparing your mind to be blessed. God is preparing your body to receive your blessing. See, because when that mother is the labor and toiling in pain, she's going through all kinds of changes. But what's happening, that baby is beginning to slip down. And see, at that point also, when the mother is beginning to trail, to travail, that means her water has broke. See, many of you, your water has broke. That means that your blessing is getting ready to come forth. Your blessing is getting ready to come out. But it is coming out through pain. And see, what you need to understand and realize, you can't look at your pain. You can't look at your circumstance, but you got to look at God. See, even Peter, even when Jesus was walking the water late at night and the storms were bossing, and Peter said, God, if it be you, bid me to come. And the word said, come. And as he listened to the word, he was able to uh, walk the water and defy gravity and not listen to the storm. And see, many of you, what God is saying to you today, don't listen to your storm. Don't listen to your circumstances. Don't listen to what you're feeling, but listen to me. See, because God is come to bring 
you out with a strong hand. But as he's bringing you out, he's going to bless you. What God is doing, one of the reasons why you feel like you're being stretched, one of the reasons why it feels like you're being pulled, because God is stretching your faith. The reason why God is stretching your faith, where he can get in, where he can abide. And see, the reason why God want to abide, because God has a greater experience that he wants to give to you. God wants to give you a greater understanding of his word. That's why, that's why I come to tell you, it might have been delayed, but not denied. David, Daniel, Daniel, he prayed a prayer. He prayed an unselfish prayer that Israel could be delivered or brought out of bondage. And now he prayed not a selfish prayer, but he prayed a prayer, a prayer for God's people. And see, the thing about it, when he prayed it, nothing happened. And then Daniel began to think that something was wrong with him. God, what is there something wrong with me? He began to shave his head and began, didn't even eat no more, didn't do nothing no more. He was numb. He sat there. He sat there for 21 days. They say, there are many of you, you're going through what you're going through. You feel like God has rejected rejected you. You feel like God has forgotten you for all the things that you're going through. See, but the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God. And see, it takes the good and the bad. See, God is shaking it up. And see, God has a desired result for you. And see, there's something good that's coming out of your situation. There's something good that's coming out of your pain. Just like that mother having that baby. That pain is bad. That pain is bad. But the thing about it, once that pain is gone, once that pain has lifted, once that baby has been delivered, then the pain will not be no more. And see, the thing about it, you need to understand, you need to stay focused. You need to stay focused because when you're under pressure sometimes, you become impatient. When you're under pressure, sometimes anxiety kick in and all kind of bad thoughts from your past kick in. But God don't want you to look at your past. That's why Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me, and I look Toward those things that are before me. And I press forward toward the pride of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. See, God wants you to press your way. Because in this next push, in this next press, God is going to bless you. God is going to open up that door. And see, many of you, that many have been doors, been closed in your eyes, been closed in your faith. And you wonder why this door is closed. You've been praying about it. You've been hoping and believing God. But God, why this door is closed? The reason why the door was closed, God said you weren't ready. God had to strengthen you some more. God had to help you some more because the Bible said the, tri the fiery trials of this life, what it does is it perfecting you. It's, it's selling you. It's strengthening you. And it's calling you to become a, a, a prepared. It's calling you to become uh, in a place where you're ready. And see, what happened is that that's what, what God told Paul when Paul was going through what he was going through. When he was going through the troubles and what he was going through, when he came down from the third heaven and he felt like God had a sign, a messenger in his flesh that buffeted and beat him. He was trying to get away from it, but he couldn't get away. And the Bible said he sought God three times. God, will you take it away from me? But then he resided in the fact that I'm going to glory in my weak place and I'm going to glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. And see, the place where you are, you're going through changes. You don't feel good. See, but that's what God's going to reveal his power. See, because there are weak places in your heart. There are weak places in your body. There's weak places in your life that God wants to perfect. And see what God is doing. God is maturing you. God is settling you that you can be ready. God is preparing you that your heart can be open to receive. See, because God got your back. It's been delayed, but not denied. Even in the story of Daniel. See, Daniel had waited. And 21 days later, the angel came and said, Daniel, I heard you the first time. But see what happened. The prince of Persia came and held up your blessing. And so I had to send Michael to loose your blessing and let it go. See, many of you, see, the angel, the adversary has been holding on your blessing. See, but I hear God say, God has just loose your blessing. God has just loose your joy. God has just loose your family. God just loose your victory. God just loose your joy. And you will find that those come a river out of you. For the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. No, what am I saying? God is giving the calls and abundance to come out of you. God is giving the calls what's in your heart to come out. See, because God wanted to come out that he can put new stuff in. See, the Bible says that we grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. In other words, stages. We go from place to place and glory to glory. In other words, God is graduating you. God is developing you. God is calling you to come from one level to the next level, to the next stage, to the next stage that you can get to the place where you become blessed. See, but all God wants you to do is to be faithful what he's given you. And 
even in your faithfulness, he's going to cause you to come up higher. But you got to remain faithful. For the Bible says to be ye steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain. Now, the word labor again, that means to toil. That means to, to fight. That means to go through all kind of changes. But the Bible says in the end, you shall receive your reward. That's why the Bible says it's not given to the strip. In the weight, the waste is not given to how fast you run. It's not given uh, to how strong you are, but to them that wait it out, to them that endure. See, you got to outlast your situation. You got to outlast your bad time, but while you're going through your bad time, keep speaking and blessing the name of God. Keep saying, God, I thank you. Keep saying, God, I love you. Keep saying, God, I know you're faithful. Just like those Hebrew boys, even when the king told them that you got to go into that den, you got to go into that fiery furnace if you don't bow down to my stature. But those Hebrew boys said, I, I'm careful. Uh, we're careful how to answer you, but I, we near will not bow down because our God is able to deliver us out of this thing and but if he can't we know he can and see the thing about those Hebrew boys because they were steadfast because they trust God they got into that fire many of you are in the fire of hurt you're in the fire of discouragement you're in the fire of pain but be like those Hebrew boys then fire not stagger not at the promise but trust God even in your fire see those three Hebrew boys when they got in that fire see the king even thought turned it up seven times higher see some of you your life has been turned up even even higher. The adversary has turned up the dial up even higher. Even in that place, in that situation, in that fire, in that pain that you're in, that hurt that you're in, God is called to come to an end. God is crushing your hurt. God is burning away your pain. But you got to remain faithful. And because if you remain faithful, just like those three Hebrew boys, that they said that there's a fourth man in that flame, like unto the Son of Man. And see, God will abide if you call on Him, if you keep believing in him. He's going to stay. He's where you are right now. He's in your situation right now. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He ain't going to turn his back on you. Oh, mama might have turned her back on you. Daddy might have turned it back on you. People have, might have betrayed you, but God would not betray you. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said he's not slack concerning his promises. So trust him today and to know to know without a shadow of a doubt it might have been delayed, but it will not be denied. For the Bible says that the vision is for the point at time and in the end it's going to speak and not lie though it tarry wait on in other words while you're waiting keep trusting in God while you're waiting keep believing in God while you're waiting say God I trust you regardless of what I'm feeling regardless of what I'm going to I trust you regardless of what they're saying about me regardless of what my mind is saying about me regardless of what my body is talking to me about whatever it is kids might be acting up body might be acting up but if you trust God he's going to bring you out and he's going to give you an answer hear me and hear me well. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and we magnify you for this day. For this is the day that you've made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, God. God, there are many people that are in a holding pattern. But you come to tell me today to tell them no to delay it. But not tonight. It's coming. But you got to stand. You got to hang in there and keep trusting God. Keep believing in you. And God, you will see us through, God. God, touch your people everywhere, God. God, for those that even hearts have an unforgiveness, unforgiveness in their heart. God, mend their heart. God, forgive them. Open their heart up that they can forgive because they can't see you without forgiving. They can't see you without getting to heaven. In order to get to heaven, they got to they, they gotta forgive. They got to forgive you, our brother on earth because you said in your word, how can you ask for forgiveness of the father, of your father who you've not seen in heaven and you can't forgive your brother each and every day that you see every day. And so God, teach them God. Teach them God. Teach them to let go and let God. Teach them God. That healing is the children's bread. God bless your people everywhere, God. God bless every home, God. God bless every mind, God. God touch everyone, God. God, there are many people. There are people that are listening to me right now, God. You're dealing. You're talking to them, God. God, talk to them even in a more intimate way. God, touch their heart and touch their mind, God. God, even as you're touching them, God. God, heal them, God. Deliver them, God. God, lead them beside the still waters of righteousness in Jesus' name, God. God, we speak, God, that families come together. God, we speak. Uh, God, God, th those people that are in the valley of decision and at the 
court, at the place of divorce court. God, we ask that you do something. God, that you work a miracle, God, and that the heart to turn back to each other again, God. God, touch your people. God, touch touch the sick. God, touch the bereaved. God, touch the set in, God. God, for those that need you, this day, their hearts are broken. God, you said in your word, you are nigh unto the broken heart. Matter of fact, you said a broken spirit and a contrite heart, you will not despise, God. God, come into that bedroom right now. That person, that woman on the bed of affliction, God. God, raise them up right now, God. God, that woman, that woman all by herself and, and don't know what to do, God. God, speak to her, God. God, give, lead her, God. God, send somebody her way, God. God, that child on that operating table, God. God, that mother, God, that father, God, on that operating table, God. God, work a miracle, God. God, for the families, they're praying a situation. Their loved one is in a situation where the darkness done gave up on them, God. God, but we speak a miracle right now, God. God, we speak a miracle to that hospital right now, God. God, we speak a miracle to their heart. God, we speak against diabetes. We speak against high blood pressure. We speak against cataracts. We speak We speak against swelling in the feet. We speak against even there's a pain in the lower back. We speak healing to those that have pain in their lower back. Even in their chest. Even in the back of their head. They think it's an aneurysm. No, it ain't an aneurysm. In the name of Jesus. We speak against everything. We break it. We curse it. And we put it up on your blood in Jesus' name. God, we pray and we thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I hope this word really bless you. If this word has really blessed you, please share. Please share. Please share your page. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you again. And I'll see you again next Wednesday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Amen. God bless you.